There are three main types of fuel in the world. Fossil fuel, fission energy, more commonly known as nuclear energy, and renewable energy. Fossil fuels are things like gas and oil. Nuclear energy is, well, nuclear. And renewable energy are things like solar panels and windmills. Each of these different types of fuels has its own disadvantages. Burning fossil fuels, you get a lot of CO2 and greenhouse gases. These gases aren't only poisonous, but are really bad for the nature around us. If a nuclear reactor has a meltdown, it can have catastrophic consequences for the environment. Renewable energies also aren't a solution yet. They cost more to manufacture than they produce. But scientists are working on a new type of energy. Fusion energy. What is it? And how does it work? To answer that question, we have to look at the biggest source of energy in our solar system. The sun. Inside the core of the sun, there's a lot of pressure, and it's very warm. So warm, in fact, that nuclei, the inside of atoms, lose their bonds with their electrons and can no longer form molecules. But, because these nuclei don't have the bonds to store the energy that is normally stored there, they have to store it somewhere else. Their energy, they store themselves. This makes them go into a very unstable state, and they want to go to a more stable state. Luckily for them, the nuclei and electrons in the core of the sun move very, very fast because the pressure is so high. Because of this, the nuclei are forced together. With every collision, they lose a little bit of energy, and the lighter elements, such as helium, can form heavier and more stable elements. And the process starts again. And this continues happening until there are no more nuclei and electrons to make new molecules. Luckily for us, it's gonna take a long, long time before this happens. You might be asking yourself, how do you want to achieve that on Earth? Here, there isn't the extreme pressure and heat that goes along with the sun. Scientists have almost figured it out. You can see two simplified models of how that would work. The first one uses magnetism. Along the edge of the reactor, there are magnets that can create a very strong magnetic field. This is because the magnets are cooled to about 2 degrees Kelvin. 0 degrees Kelvin is the absolute minimum temperature in the universe, so you can imagine this is pretty cold. Because of those very strong magnets, the particles in the reactor are pushed against each other and generate a lot of heat and pressure. And this kickstarts the project. Reactors like these are used for in, for example, the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITER. The second type of reactor is a so-called inertial confinement reactor. These types of reactors use a small fuel pellet and fire high-powered infrared and ultraviolet laser beams on them. This makes the pellet extremely warm, so warm in fact that it will implode and start the reaction. These types of reactors are used in, for example, the National Ignition Facility in the US. For these reactors, you need elements called deuterium and tritium. Deuterium is really common in normal seawater. Tritium, on the other hand, is a lot harder to come by. But there might be a solution. Helium free. This is because tritium is a very rare element on Earth. It's very radioactive and there's only about 20 kilograms of it on the entire planet, which mostly sits in nuclear warheads. Helium free, on the other hand, is not radioactive and thus less dangerous. And it can create the same reaction as tritium. The Earth has a strong magnetic field that blocks the radiation that is needed to make helium free. The moon doesn't have a magnetic field, and over millions of years it might have built up a lifelong supply of helium free. If we can get this, there's a big chance our energy problems will be solved. Another reason to build a moon base if it wasn't good enough already. So you might be asking yourself, isn't it dangerous? Luckily, it isn't. There's only a small amount of tritium or helium free in use at once. It's in such a low concentration that if it leaks out of the reactor, it doesn't harm the environment. So I've just told you that fusion energy can solve all of our energy problems. So why isn't there a huge queue at the entrance of every reactor waiting to invest in it? Well, the answer is simple. We don't know if we are ever going to be able to build the technology required for fusion energy. All of the reactors we've built so far were experimental and cost more to run than they actually produce. It's also a huge gamble to invest into something as fusion energy. If they're not able to build the technology required, the company can lose millions of dollars. There might be a day on which fusion energy is a viable source of energy. But that day isn't in sight yet.